the tunnel and into the elbow. If you feel the elbow from, it's actually coming from the top of the bone, but on the inside of the elbow, you'll feel a little knot there. When you open your hands, there's five muscles on top of those fingers that go back to the uh, epicondyle, which is that knot on the other side that mm -hmm. allows you to open and close. And of course, you know, you rotate the hand and you got muscles between the bones that allow that to happen as well. The thing is with tendonitis is that as you're using your hands, and we'll use them for opening doors, driving our cars, if we play any type of a racket sport or a game like golf, the gripping of those, of those apparatuses will cause the muscles in the forearm to start to tighten. And, and you can just make a fist and you can watch the muscles in your forearm actually flexing as you're making that fist. Mm -hmm. Doing that enough times, you'll find that, that up around the elbow and those little bony knots, what I call the epicondyles, people will start to get some pain radiating from there. Now, the idea is that the cause of that pain is right where the pain is. And, and the truth of the matter is, is you come down from the elbow about an inch to two inches down that elbow and start to feel those muscles, those muscles will feel as hard as rocks. And really and truly, the muscles throughout the entire body, the muscles should feel as soft as cotton candy because that gives the body the flexibility and the, the pliability that no matter what happens in your life, if you fall down or something, or you hit your arm, the, the injury will be far less than if that muscle's hard because there's no give there. And that's where the flexibility comes in, the give. And so as, as you start to flex the hand, you'll notice that that tendonitis will actually get worse. In the knee, usually it's coming from the, the muscles that are in the shins, the, the tibialis anteriors, the peroneus muscles into the shins, and to see those work is if you take your foot and you start to flex your toes up back towards your nose, you'll see the muscles on the front side of that leg actually starting to contract. As they contract and they're burning that, that adenosine triphosphate, the ATP, and that lactic acid is built up in there, what happens is that it causes the muscle to get hard and it starts to shorten from the belly of the muscle and you're actually pulling harder, more from that attachment site where the muscle attaches to the bone than necessary. That pulling from there is what's setting off that inflammation, which goes into tendonitis. Putting a band around your leg or putting a band around your arm is only holding it in place temporarily. And the more you keep using it, the worse it's going to get. And, and that's where people wind up. And that's the thing too about the muscles. You know, you'll see people with joint replacements. Um, when you look at the bones, you know, the, the tips of the bones are much softer tissue than what's in the middle. And that's right. why it's covered with the cartilage. But because the muscles are crossing those bones, the tighter those muscles get, the more they're pulling those bones close together. You're then squeezing out the synovial fluid in that joint, causing those bones to have damage over a long period of time. We didn't just wake up one day and my knee was bad. That knee was bad because over a period of time of what I was doing. And that's the importance of the flexibility and the stretching is to actually get the pressure off the joints and get the pressure off the disc in your back so that your body, A, can lubricate itself and have the cushioning agent in those areas. And more importantly, if you're older, if you fall, it lessens a lot of the injuries that people have. You know, but your your expertise and your understanding of the body is so important when you're working um, on individuals. I know because you and I are in the same in the same yeah. role, and yeah. uh, it, it's so interesting because we are we do fall under the category of massage therapists, but people don't rec don't have the distinction yeah. of what it is in this world of yeah. one massage therapist over another. That's, yep. that's really um, a challenge for us. How do you deal with that? Well, I mean, that's probably the toughest thing I have to deal with every day because when they see my card or they, somebody says, well, he's a massage therapist, the first thing they think of is I'm going to give them a nice massage rub. Down, right. <laughs> you know, and they're going to be on, they're like everybody else, you know. And it's like what people don't really understand about massage, and it's about getting educated, is that there's over 200 different modalities of massage, and each one has its place. And, and what I'm doing has its place. It's different from, from what other people are doing. Um, it takes a little more work because instead of somebody going and laying down on the bed and, and somebody rubbing oil on you, you actually have to go home and do something. Um, so the thing, the thing for the clients that I talk to, number one thing is they have to be willing to do something. And, and 
if they're willing to do that, then we can start and go from there. I always say to them, I'm a guider. And as a guider, I'm guiding you and giving you information that can help you with your body to stop it from being in pain. Um, so trying to explain the differences, if I can get the chance to talk to them, works really well. If you just put on an advertisement that I'm a massage therapist and I do stretching, well, most people say, well, you know, I go to so-and-so for a massage and I go to the gym and we stretch at the gym. Um, and what they don't realize is, is what I do is very different. So I'm actually um, working with a friend of mine to see if we can change that designation through the national board haven't heard anything yet, but we'll see see if that works. So we'll go. You and I, you and I need to talk some more for sure. Yes, uh, yes. That's I'm very very interested in that. Kimberly, okay. you have another question for Butch. Yeah. So I know that when people get over the age of sixty, especially if they've been involved in sports a lot, then the yes. concern some the concern comes to hip surgery, hip yes. issues, and um, cortisol. Short, you know, because this is a great alternative for them to yeah. feel like there's something else that I can do. Yes. before something serious because uh, they'll give you shots of steroids or whatever, yeah. right? Usually for, right. yeah. So um, have you had instances where you've worked with people that are having the onset of, you know, hip pain that's so bad that they think they have to get surgery and help them? Almost daily. <laughs> oh, I it's love a, it. I mean, this is know, great. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, is that, yeah, you're right. When, when people start to hit that 55, 60 mark, you know, things start to change in their life and, They'll get involved in running or biking or they'll get involved in tennis and that kind of thing. Um, you know, several things happen in that hip pain that people don't fully understand. And that's like when you when you have muscles that are really tight, number one, as we've already talked about, that we've already talked about how that causes pain in the joint itself. The shoes you wear. You know, one of the things, and, and I, I've got a, uh, a study from Harvard that I listened to, it was done in 2018. In fact, I've got a link for it here at my office. But the thing was, was that when you look at the shoes we wear, and when you look at the specialty sneakers that people are wearing, what they don't understand is that if they, if they could clearly get a vision of the mechanics of the foot and the calf and how that works, what they would find is that many of the causes of that hip and knee pain are coming from the shoes that they wear. So let me give you a quick synopsis of that. Most people, when they do a calf stretch, they'll lean against the wall or they'll get on a slam board or they'll get on a curb. And yeah, you'll feel some pulling in the calf, but really and truly what you're stretching is the Achilles tendon. You actually have four calf muscles. So when you're playing things like tennis and golf and, and you're rotating your body, People think of rotating the hips, for instance, but when you rotate the human body because of those four calf muscles, the rotation starts in your feet. Mm. So they work with the three hamstrings along with the, the hip rotation that allows you to be able to turn. So number one, that rotation can put a lot of pressure on the hip from the top side because you're using small muscles to actually try to move larger muscles. When you look at the feet themselves, your feet should be as soft as the palm of your hand. And so when you think about the foot, it grips the ground just like your hand would grip a door handle. Mm -hmm. When you look at the arch of the foot, that plantar fascia muscle there, what happens there is that when you step down, it's supposed to flex to actually absorb the impact of you hitting the ground with your feet, whether you're running or walking or, or whatever. When you have too much of a buildup in that shoe for the arch support because the arches were sore, then that prevents that from actually extending out. Now, the people who put you in art supports or, or put you in orthotics, they did it because you had foot pain and they're trying to stop the pain. We were all taught that. You know, if my back hurts, let's go to the back and rub it to death and massage or, you know, we're going to put a brace on it or whatever. But that's how we were taught is symptom based. So long term, that buildup inside of your shoe actually causes the arch muscle to atrophy. We talked about earlier with the quadricep muscles in front of the thighs, uh -huh. when, when that is free and the foot can flex, the ankle can flex because all four calf muscles are bending, yeah. the foot that goes behind you when you walk, you should feel your toes actually pushing you forward. Whereas when you watch most people 18 to 80, when they walk, they're walking, pulling with their thighs, yeah. which causes hip and back issues. You know, so, there's so, so much. I don't want to cut you off at no, all. This I, is, yeah. Oh, this is great. <laughs> this is so important, but we are out of time. It's so crazy. I understand. I understand. So, I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to have you back so we can talk because that 
what you're just explaining is really, really important. But I wanted to give our listeners a chance to hear um, how to get a hold of you. And sure. also, uh, I think you have an offering for our listeners. Go ahead. I do. I do. Number one, you can get a hold of me at my office at www.musclerepairshop.com. And on that website, you can actually schedule an appointment with me through the website. You can call me at 941-366-3666. And anyone listening, if you will call me and tell me that you heard me on the radio, I'll give you a free 30-minute consultation that we can sit down and talk and see how I can help you or if I can help you. Um, and we can run from there. That's really awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today, Butch. And it's been a real pleasure hearing, hearing my voice through you. <laughs> That's good. I hope it sounded as good as yours. <laughs> oh, it better, better. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Thanks a lot, Kimberly. Thanks, Patricia. Thanks for tuning into our show on SocietyBytesRadio.com. Don't worry if you've missed a show. You can find them all on our website at SarasotaHolisticChamberOfCommerce.com.